International Airport named after Jorge Chavez, Lima, October 2, 1996. On the tarmac, the Boeing 757-23A passenger airliner of Aero Peru is getting ready to depart for its final destination, Santiago, operating Flight 603. In fact, this flight originated in Miami and was initially carried out on a Boeing 727. However, a few hours ago, when the aircraft landed here in Lima, aviation technicians identified technical malfunctions, and as a result, the plane had to be replaced with a reserve Boeing 757 that had already undergone all the required technical checks. After that, passengers began to board. A total of 70 people are on this flight, 61 passengers and 9 crew members. In charge of the blink is a seasoned crew. Aircraft commander, 58-year-old Eric Schrieber, Ladron de Guevara, second pilot, 42-year-old David Fernandez, Revoredo, and in the plane's cabin, there are seven flight attendants. An hour before departure, the AC conducted an external inspection of the aircraft using a flashlight and, not finding anything suspicious, returned to the cockpit to prepare for takeoff. Lima Tower, Aero Peru 603, runway 15, ready for takeoff. Aero Peru 603, Roger. We will follow the noise abatement procedure. Conditions are calm on the ground. Takeoff from runway 15 is approved. 0042, the controller grants permission for our crew to take off, and the Boeing 757 lifts off from Lima Airport's runway, setting course for Santiago. After the takeoff, the aircraft begins to climb. However, within seconds, the pilots notice unusual behavior from the airliner, indicating that something is clearly wrong. The situation gradually starts slipping out of control, Altitude indicators are frozen. Hey, look, the altimeters are stuck. Yes. Everything is frozen. Is this something new? Set V2 plus 10, V2 plus 10. Suddenly, an alarm for low speed and altitude sounds in the cockpit. The AC starts examining the signal indications while the second pilot tries to maintain control over the aircraft. However, the rudder ratio alarm goes off again, followed by a signal indicating an improper stabilizer position. Mac trim. While the second pilot holds the yoke, the commander tries to make sense of this confusing combination of malfunction signals. At that moment, a caution alarm resonates in the cockpit, and a few seconds later, an alert alarm sounds, further perplexing the pilots. Realizing the criticality of the situation, the pilots contact the tower and report serious issues. Lima Tower, Aero Peru Shasta 3. Aero Peru 603 Tower, go ahead. You're experiencing an emergency without primary instruments. No altimeters, no airspeed indicators. We acknowledge the distress. Do you understand what is your height? We don't know, but we're below 1,000 feet, approximately 1,700. Aero Peru 603 confirmed. If you can, switch to frequency 119.7 for instructions from radar control. Roger, Aero Peru 603. Switching to 119.7. Just a second later, the auto throttle disengages and an alarm for a high rudder ratio and reaching the maximum allowable speed, match speed, sounds. To alleviate the workload, the pilots attempt to activate the autopilot, but due to significant discrepancies between the ACs and the second pilot's instruments, the autopilot immediately disengages. The pilots contact Limitour, informing them of their intention to return and requesting vectors for landing on runway 15. The controller instructs them to steer a heading of 330 dig and maintain an altitude of 1220 meters, to which the pilots respond that they are unable to comply as their aircraft continues to ascend. The second pilot also reports serious control issues. At this moment, the pilots notice that the altimeters have started functioning again and are indicating an increase in altitude. Air Peru 603. You are currently at an altitude of 900. What is your current heading? Heading 205. Aero Peru 603, confirmed. You are making a slow right turn, correct? No, we are heading away from the coast. The aircraft is currently 48 kilometers away from the shore, and the controller has suggested maintaining an altitude of 3,650 meters and a heading of 350 degrine. The pilots attempt to re-engage the autopilot, and after several tries, it activates. Meanwhile, the controller contacts the pilots, indicating that, according to radar data, 
the aircraft is flying at an altitude of 3,650 meters with an approximate speed of 574 kilogalmage and instructs them to steer a heading of 330 fart. Two minutes later, another alarm sounds in the cockpit and the autopilot disengages. The pilots initiate a descent to 3,000 meters and at this point, the commander notices that the speed, according to the instruments, exceeds the maximum. The crew requests the dispatcher's radar speed readings, to which the controller responds that the radar indicates 592 km h, while the instruments in the cockpit show 648 km h. To reduce speed, the pilots deploy spoilers, air brakes mounted on the wings, but the overspeed alarm sounds again. The crew reduces thrust by pulling back on the throttles, but it proves ineffective. The pilots are in complete confusion as the speed readings continue to rise, reaching 731 kilonautor h, and a stall warning sounds, further disorienting the crew. Both pilots are simply unsure what to believe. Our aircraft is flying over the open ocean in complete darkness. The pilots have no external reference points, while the onboard computer provides conflicting information about the essential flight parameters. Tell me, is there any plane that could save us? Yes, understood. We are coordinating immediately. Already coordinating. Any plane that could take us. Any Aero Peru or someone further east. Anyone. Attention, we have a 707 departing to Puta Well. We will inform him. However, the Boeing 707 is only ready to take off in 15 minutes, while our flight is counting down the remaining time in seconds. At 0101, the dispatcher informs the pilots that, according to radar, they are at an altitude of 3,000 meters, with a speed of 407 km h, and the distance to Lima is 59 kilometers. The crew is astonished by such a discrepancy in readings between the radar and their instruments and they begin to increase engine thrust. In the cockpit, for almost 45 seconds, a ground proximity warning system, GPWS alert sounds, indicating a dangerous proximity to the ground, terrain. too low terrain, while the altimeter shows a flight altitude of 3,000 meters. The pilots once again request the ground to provide their speed readings, and they are told that the speed is 370 kilometers h and still decreasing. Realizing that the aircraft is about to fall into the water, the pilots increase engine thrust to the maximum. Soon, the warning about dangerous proximity to the ground goes silent, leading the pilots to conclude that it was another system failure. At 0108, the captain activates the instrument landing system to bring the aircraft onto the approach course, then turns to a heading of 070 degree and begins extending the flaps. Please tell me our altitude because we seem to be gaining. According to the readings, 9700 is maintained. 9700? Yes, that's right. This is the height he shows. Do you have visual references? 9700, but we have a ground proximity warning. Are you sure we're on your radar at 50 miles? We're hitting the water! Climb, climb, Aero Peru 603, if your alarm is sounding, climb up. At Aero 110, the Boeing 757, flying at a speed of 481 quantum h at a 10 degree angle with the left wing, touched the water. The pilots pulled the control yoke sharply towards themselves, causing the aircraft to climb, but water had already entered the left engine leading to flame out, and it stopped. This caused a sudden thrust imbalance. Climbing to 60 meters, Flight 603 flipped over and, at a speed of 426 km h, crashed into the ocean, breaking into two parts and submerging. All 70 people on board perished. At the direction of air traffic controllers, rescue teams were dispatched to the Pacific Ocean coast, hoping to spot light signals from the aircraft that had ditched, but they saw no signals. Later, a local fisherman reported seeing a flash on the horizon. In the morning, long streaks of aviation fuel were found on the water surface, confirming the worst fears. The aircraft had crashed upon impact with the water. Nine bodies of the deceased were found on the surface. The rest had drowned along with the aircraft. 
The investigation into the PLI 603 crash was undertaken by the Ministry of Transportation and Communications of Peru, CIAA. Guido Fernandez Llanas, the uncle of David Fernandez Revoredo, the second pilot of Flight 603, was appointed as the chief investigator. To aid in the search for the aircraft, the U.S. Navy offered assistance and they soon discovered the plane at a depth of over 400 meters, broken into two parts. Audio recordings of the pilot's conversations with air traffic controllers were also reviewed. The cause of the crash was quickly identified. Static pressure sensors on the captain's side were taped with insulation tape. The tape was applied during the aircraft washing process and was inadvertently left in place after the work was completed. Due to this taping, false readings were generated during takeoff. Since the sensors on the other side of the aircraft were not taped, a discrepancy in readings occurred in the system, leading to incorrect instrument indications. Typically, using insulation tape on speed and altitude sensors is a standard procedure during aircraft washing or painting. However, the tape should be brightly colored to ensure easy visibility. In the case of Flight 603, workers used non-standard silver tape and the airport employee who applied it on that day was working as a trainee and was not fully aware of the importance of these sensors. Consequently, he simply forgot to remove the tape after completing the technical procedures. On December 13, 1999, the family members of the passengers of Flight 603 received one of the largest financial compensations for those killed in an aviation disaster, amounting to $1 million per deceased person. For the airline Aero Peru, which was already facing serious financial losses, this proved to be fatal. In the same year, the airline declared bankruptcy. Consequently, all financial liabilities fell on Boeing, which completed the payments only in 2006.